I'm Michael. I'm Nicholas. And we are from Scotland. Aye, big reverend in Scotland. Okay, aye, then who? Okay, aye. Sign up for Church Millet in the day. Church Militant Talk TV. Aye. aye. <laughs> the second annual churchmilitant.tv Retreat at Sea is coming up in January. This year's theme is about the Catholic Restoration and what you can do to get involved. Click the link for more details. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vorce. There's such a tentativeness in the Catholic world today. Even Cardinal Dolan of New York last year said that he and other leaders are gun-shy, his words, about boldly proclaiming Catholic truths. That's ridiculous. As many of you know, I attended Notre Dame, so I frequently use football analogies when talking about the faith. When a powerhouse team plays a decidedly inferior team, Sometimes the powerhouse is a little tentative or hesitant. The powerhouse team jumps out to a quick lead, quick lead, and then kind of goes to sleep or just phones it in for the rest of the game. It almost looks like the players lose interest. As a result, they leave the weaker team hanging around, meaning instead of crushing them as they should and sending them back into the locker room at halftime thoroughly depressed and dispirited, they leave them hanging around. They are left with just enough hope in the back of their minds that they just might be able to pull off that upset if they can just keep the score close enough so that by the time the fourth quarter rolls around, they are in striking distance of winning the game and pulling off the upset. This is in fact how little nothing teams are able to beat big superior teams. But notice the action first begins with the superior team dropping its defenses and creating the climate for the upset to happen in the first place. And we see this all over the church today. A kind of psychological weakness, a fear almost of asserting who we are and what we believe. And there are hundreds of reasons that are offered up as excuses. Can't loudly condemn from the pulpit divorce and remarriage or contraception or cohabitation or masturbation or homosexual acts or even abortion because someone might be sitting out in the pews who would be offended because they or a loved one falls into one of those categories. They might get up and leave the parish. They might stop <clears throat> contributing to the collection plate. They might pull their kids from the school. Now's not the time. They aren't ready to hear all of this yet. The list of these excuses is endless. It doesn't matter if someone is sitting in the church building if they're never challenged to get themselves out of a condition of a sinful life or grave evil. The same way the entire purpose of a team taking the field and playing football is to win, the entire purpose of the church is to get souls to heaven. There's too much of a prevalent attitude in the church today that we shouldn't play to win, or perhaps better said, the definition of winning has been revised to making people feel comfortable, keep them in the pews, collect their money, and so forth. That's not very far different from what Judas did, betraying our blessed Lord for money. The church's solemn duty is proclaim the truth, period. If some people walk away, heck, even if most people walk away, so be it. There is precedent, you know, when the Jewish crowds abandoned our blessed Lord when he revealed himself to be the bread of life come down from heaven. Sad? Yes. A temporary setback? Sure, after a fashion. But when they left, others came in. And that seems to be the huge problem, a problem of vision in the church today and among church leaders. We are hampered by this fear that the proclamation of the truth will have such deleterious effects. Yeah? And so what if it does? Do we not have faith that the Holy Spirit will provide? That the Queen of Heaven, our Mother, will not supply? When Europe was being ripped apart by the Protestant revolt of the 16th century, she came down from heaven in Guadalupe, Mexico, and supplied what was lost in Europe. As a matter of fact, more than what was lost in Europe. We are too afraid as a church to say the truth because at the end of the day, we care too much about ourselves and our own pride and our own ambitions. Did not the second person of the Holy, Tr Holy Trinity tell us that he has given us the power to tread on scorpions, meaning the powers of hell? We need to start living the faith this way with those in the church who like the status quo 
and have it all figured out with their budgets and their plans and their projects and their committees and their departments. Preach the truth and play to win and start performing like the superior team that the Holy Catholic Church is, ordained by Almighty God to be the path to heaven. If some in the church don't like that, well then they can get up and leave like their ancestors did. But others will be drawn to the glory and the beauty of the truth, of the church. As it is now, the glory of the faith is being covered up and in its place a weak, effeminate sentimentality that is neither winning converts nor keeping Catholics in the pews. The motto at Notre Dame Stadium for the football team is, play like a champion today. That's how you win this game. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.